welcome my dear students so we are discussing about the characterization of the finite dimensional normed spaces and its subspaces so in this section we have already discussed that on a given set of linearly independent vectors finite set of vectors you can always find a constant which satisfies the inequality norm of alpha 1 x1 plus etc plus norm of alpha n xn greater than or equal to c into modulus of alpha 1 plus etc plus modulus of alpha n so as a consequence of that theorem we can establish that every finite dimensional normed space is complete this is actually one of the first characterization of finite dimensional normed space this characterization is very important because when you consider the finite dimensional normed space it is always complete you cannot find an incomplete finite dimensional normed space every incomplete finite in every incomplete uh, normed space should be infinite dimensional this is what this theorem establishes let's move on to the statement of the theorem so the theorem every finite dimensional subspace y of a normed space x is complete which states that if you are given with a space capital x and if you are give, if you are choosing a subspace y which is actually a finite dimensional subspace which in the sense that it's a finite dimensional vector space then y should be complete okay and also from that we can easily state the theorem that every finite dimensional normed space is complete because every finite dimensional normed space is a subspace of itself so from the first part of the theorem every finite dimensional subspace of a normed space is complete so from that we can establish that every finite dimensional normed space is always complete so this is one of the prime characterization of finite dimensional uh, normed spaces so actually every finite dimensional normed space is banach okay so this is what this theorem states so in order to prove this theorem we have to take a sequence arbitrary sequence and convert arbitrary cauchy sequence and we have to establish that that sequence converges in the space itself so let's move on to the proof let's move on to the proof so what we are going to do is we are taking an arbitrary cauchy sequence and we will prove that that cauchy sequence converges in the space itself so let's y b the subspace subspace of x okay now we have to prove that y is complete so we have to establish that we have to prove that y is complete for what we are going to do is we are taking take a cauchy sequence cauchy y m in y and we have to prove that y m the sequence y m actually converges in y this is what we have to establish okay so since we are assume that y is actually finite dimensional since y is finite dimensional we assume that dimension of y is actually n which means that every element in y can be written as a linear combination of some basis containing n elements so for that we have to choose a basis so let set e1 e2 etc en be any basis 
of y. Dimension is n, so the base is consisting of exactly n elements. Since y n is y m is an element in capital Y, y m is an element in capital Y, and this is actually a basis of capital Y, then y m can be written as the linear combination of these elements e1, e2, etc. E n. That is y m can be written as y m is equal to some alpha 1 m e1 plus alpha 2 m e2 etc alpha n m e n which is actually the linear combination of the elements e1 e2 etc e n where alpha 1 alpha 1 m alpha 2 m etc alpha n m are constants so we have taken a Cauchy sequence and Cauchy sequence can be written in this form. Okay. Since this is actually a Cauchy sequence, by the definition of Cauchy sequence, we can write it as for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a natural number n such that norm of yn minus yr should be less than epsilon for all m comma n greater than or equal to capital n okay this is because we have assumed that ym is Cauchy so we can write this inequality as norm of ym can be written as I can write it in the in the terms of summation summation j is equal to 1 to n alpha j m e j minus in the case of y r you replace m by r that's only different summation j is equal to 1 to n alpha j r e j should be less than epsilon for all m comma n greater than or equal to capital this is by the definition of the Cauchy sequence and we have defined that ym is an element in capital y so which can be expressed as the linear combination of the basis elements now this summation is common to both these terms you can actually write this as g is equal to summation norm of summation j is equal to 1 to n bracket in bracket alpha jm minus alpha jr into ej which is actually less than epsilon okay so ym minus yn yr can be written as this now in this inside part we can use uh, the previous theorem here e1 e2 etc en is a linearly independent set and alpha jm minus alpha j are constants then by previous theorem then by theorem we can write norm of summation j is equal to 1 to n alpha j m minus alpha j r into e j should be greater than or equal to some constant c into summation j is equal to 1 to n modulus of alpha j m minus alpha j r we have only written we have only replaced x j by e j and alpha j by alpha j m minus alpha j r that's the only difference from the previous year. now we can substitute this in this expression okay now we can write it as norm of y m minus y r 
which is actually equal to norm of summation j is equal to 1 to n alpha j m minus alpha j r into e j which is greater than or equal to c into summation j is equal to 1 to n modulus of alpha j m minus alpha j r okay now we have already assumed that ym is cauchy so norm of ym minus yr should be less than epsilon or epsilon should be greater than norm of ym minus yr we wrote it in the reverse form now take this and the last part okay so we can be written as for convenience norm of epsilon should be greater than norm of ym minus norm of yr which is greater than or equal to c into summation j is equal to 1 to n modulus of alpha j m minus alpha j r okay now take the first and the last part only okay so this implies epsilon is greater than c into summation j is equal to 1 to n modulus of alpha j m minus alpha j r okay now we write it we can uh, write it in the reverse form and also we can move this c onto the right hand side since c is positive we can divide this equality inequality throughout by c so we can be written as epsilon by c is actually greater than summation j is equal to 1 to n modulus of alpha j m minus alpha j r okay now we can write it in the reverse form so in the reverse form we can write it as summation j is equal to 1 to n modulus of alpha j m minus alpha j r should be less than epsilon by c since we have obtained this inequality by using Cauchy's condition for we can write the continuous part as so for all m comma n greater than or equal to capital n now since this summation this is a summation of modulus of something so it's a positive term this sum should be less than epsilon by c for all m comma n greater than or equal to n which means that each of this part each of these individual parts should be less than epsilon by c okay so since the sum is less than epsilon by c since it's the sum of some positive quantities each of this part should be less than epsilon by c so i can write it as i can write it as modulus of alpha j m minus alpha j r should be less than epsilon by c for all m comma n greater than or equal to m okay now alpha j m and alpha j r are real numbers okay so from this we can assume that if we consider this alpha j m as a sequence this means that alpha j m minus alpha j r should be less than epsilon by c 1 by c is some constant which is less than a small positive number after a certain stage so which means that alpha j m the sequence alpha j m is Cauchy. This is actually a real or complex sequence because uh, in the vector space we have already considered that the underneath field should be either real or complex numbers in the case of number spaces. So from that uh, space we are choosing the constants. So alpha jm should be either real sequence or complex sequence. So from this condition we can clearly understand that this is actually a Cauchy sequence. This is actually a Cauchy sequence in set of all real numbers or set of all complex numbers. So I will, we will discuss the rest of the part in the next video.